optimally in our computational model, produce Gustin formulas for numbers up to n by using a very nice algorithm inspired by uh, Wilf Combinatorial Algorithms book. And the idea is to recur. So this is a Python code, uh, which is going to produce the following output. Uh, and let's try and understand why. All right? And we can call it a day, uh, unless there are more questions. Um, I will describe to you how this works. All right? So I'm going to use x for 2, because in any computer algebra system, if you put 2 for 2, when you're going to have 2 plus 1, it's going to write 3. <laughs> and you completely lost your formulas. So if you want to keep track of the formulas, you need to say x. So x is, you can say y. But x is 2. All right? And the way I'm going to build my numbers is the, the, the following trick. All right, let me write here. I'm going to start with this guy, 1 and x. Then I'm going to raise everything to the power of x. So I'm going to add x to the 1 x to the x. And of course, I had the ones I started out with, 1, x. All right, x to the 1, we know this is x. Uh, so x to the 1 is x. I don't need to repeat. So this is 1, x, and x. OK, clearly, this is not all the numbers. If you want all the numbers, you have to use all possible subsets. And then you have all the numbers. So let's say I use this subset. This subset gives me 1 plus x. This is a good number. This subset gives me x plus x over x. And let me put 1, x. Am I having all of them? Did I miss some? Yes. So there's a subset of size 3, 1 plus x plus x to the x. Uh, do I have 1 plus x to the x? 1 plus x to the x is also there. So the algorithm I described here, very short. I, I couldn't resist the temptation of putting it here because it's very short. It actually does this. He produces formulas, he raises them to the power, and just concatenates all possible subsets. All right? And this is an optimal algorithm if you wanted to list all possible Gaussian encoding for numbers. So I've been trying to do this and actually thinking about these as functions of x. What happens when you plug in 2.03 or 1.03? Uh, what properties do you have? Now, I will conclude with stating the outstanding open problems I've been trying to solve with this and motivate it somehow more from a computer science perspective. So the open questions are, have to do with finding the shortest possible formulas, at least how long they would be. So, so far I told you how to produce formulas, but you could ask, what are the smallest possible formulas? If you wanted the smallest possible formula which evaluated it to a number, you could use dynamic programming to do it, and we actually did it. However, what would the size be as n grow? And how many of them would appear? It turns out there are many formulas which have the same size, which is the minimal size, and we want to know asymptotically how many are there out there. Now, the reason we ask is because the choice you make for canonical formulas actually tells you something about numbers. Here we did the recursive decimal expansion. You could do recursive prime factorization expansion. And experiments are suggesting that the recursive prime factorization actually gives you smaller formulas on average. Now, if that's true, what that would tell you is that if you're saving space, at least as described by formulas, by using recursive prime factorization, you must pay for the space somehow in time complexity. So you should expect factoring not to be too easy. Now, these types of questions motivate from a computer science perspective why you care about formulas. So uh, I'll conclude the talk by inviting you to join me in this experimental mad venture. And on the upside, it's very nice games with, with ping pong balls. And it allows us to understand the algorithms for integer arithmetic in a more natural way. So with this, I conclude my talk and invite more questions. No questions? Yes, thank you. Yes. Do you get any nice sequences out of this? Yes, yes, we get some.
very nice sequence. Some of them have been uploaded on, on Sloan. <laughs> so we got the sequence for the length of the shortest formula from 1 to, I believe, uh, 20,000. And so we got some nice sequences on Sloan out of them. Uh, with, I'm still obsessed by the asymptotics of it, but yes, you get some nice sequences out of these, definitely. Yes, uh, there was a question here? Yeah, what's the biggest number we can? <laughs> no, I'm not giving the answer to that one. <laughs> but, but I would expect that if you double all the gates, you're, not, you're more than doubling the number. So, that I'm giving away. Right. I believe it, sh it shouldn't be higher than 20. That's, that's my guess. But I didn't try very carefully. Somebody could get better than 20? Yes? So, as far as uh, dealing with the box itself, are we limited by how many? Operators we have? I mean, how many exponentiations? No, no, no. So in the for the box, yes. So for the box, the number of the rule is these are the number of exponentiation you're given. Ah. You're given that number of multiplication, and you're given that number of ones. Now, what is the biggest number you can come up with? That's question A. That was a warm-up question. The, the more difficult one is now everything is doubled. What happened to that number? And you know, if you think that's still a joke, you can double, continue doubling, and see what happens to the sequence of these largest numbers. And the asymptotic might be also interesting. So, uh, yes? Uh, I'm wondering if you've ever heard of a card game called 24? <laughs> <laughs> no, not yet. Right. Okay, so, well, you will now. <laughs> the idea is you get four cards from a deck of, a standard deck of 52, mm -hmm. and then the idea is to try to form 24 using all four numbers, and using, use, you have to use, um, using all four numbers, and you're only, you're only allowed to use addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. Interesting. And then um, a more interesting problem would be, given, say, n cards mm -hmm. out of your deck of 52, mm -hmm. which numbers would you always be would you always be able to generate using all of the numbers using the four basic operations? Because it's not always possible to get 24. Say you get ace, 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 right. that would be one, 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 one. And, you know, all ones are pretty limited, right? So, right. Well, that's a, thank you for suggesting. That sounds like a nice experiment for my project right there. Thank you. Any other questions? Yes? What about representing negative integers? <laughs> Yes, so, so this, you, there's a price you pay for negative integers. The zero lessness disappears, right? Because one minus one, you need to include zero. So if we want this, if I could, if I could change the title, where it's no longer zero less integer arithmetics, then yes, I would allow a negative one. However, in the, prime, in the prime encoding, there was something nice which occurs. If you're using prime numbers and you allow the negative one, then your decimal expansion are no longer infinite. And that actually allows you a nice combinatorial proof that the rational numbers are, are countable. So that was a convenient side effect. So yes, if you want negative one, then zero lessness disappears. Uh, but I still think they are manageable. I haven't tried counting them because you have to rule out all the a minus a. Minus a. And there are many of those. So the counting problem might be uh, harder there. But uh, good question. Any other questions? Thank you very much.